So Derek Lewis has been charged with reckless driving after driving 136 miles per hour in a 50 mile per hour zone. Absolutely crazy. He had a response to this that I'm going to get into in today's video as well. We're also going to talk about Ian Gary allegedly having a history of being kicked out of gyms. Of course, he was kicked out of Team Renegades, which was Leon Edwards' gym. I don't think for any bad reason, but it was... A good enough reason, in my opinion. They don't want a contender in a division to be training around Leon Edwards when he is the champion. So they kicked him out of the gym. Well, kicked him out. They said they don't want to have him in the gym anymore. But allegedly, he has a history of being kicked out of gyms because he was kicked out of his old gym when he was fighting in Cage Warriors on the come up. And we're also going to look at these interviews that he had where his wife comes into frame on a few different situations. This dude is being absolutely... We're going to get into that later in the interview. Um, MMA Uncensored, not just them, but uh, Paul Felder is back in the USADA pool. He's set to return in six months' time. So I thought I'd talk about the return of Paul Felder as well at the end of this video. But we're going to talk about Derek Lewis first. Charged with reckless driving, driving 136 miles per hour, in a speed limit of 50 miles per hour. Now, I don't mind if you got caught driving over the speed limit. You were at 60 in a 50. You were at 55 in a 50. Like, if anything, sometimes when you put a speed limit so low, it's more dangerous to be constantly having to worry about making sure you're on that speed limit. Um, and it makes you less sort of concentrating on the road. So I feel like having a bit of leeway there is good for speeding because it means people aren't so strict and constantly looking at their speed dial, wondering how fast they're going and can actually focus on driving, knowing that they're somewhere within the range of the speed limit. 136 miles per hour in a 50 mile per hour zone. What are you doing? What are you doing? Like, I know Derek Lewis is funny, and everyone loves Derek Lewis. Why, in any way, are you doing this? I, I just, I don't understand. I think life just gets too easy for some people, and they have to find a way to mess it up for themselves just for a bit of excitement. You're set. I don't know if people know about the contract Derek Lewis is on, but he makes great money. And he made great money ever since he saved UFC 230 against Daniel Cormier, if you remember that. He has been making really solid money in his career to show, not even to win, just to show up he makes great money. And that's why he's probably taken this fight against Jelton Almeida on short notice. You're set. You live in a mansion. You have a Lamborghini or something. Like, you're... You drive a really nice car. We've all seen this. You have a family. You have kids. Why are you going 86 miles per hour over the speed limit? You have the money to go to a, a racetrack if you want to. Like, there's just... What are they doing? Like, maybe it's just boredom. Maybe he's trying to sort of like... Maybe he's got the buzz of fighting Jailton Almeida and now he's trying to like, hype himself up a little bit and go a bit crazy, but, like, this is just, like, no care for anyone else whatsoever. 136 in a 50-mile-per-hour zone. Charged with reckless driving. Absolutely correctly. I don't know why fighters do this, but we're going to get into Derek Lewis's response. I mean, I can sit here and complain and be a Karen about it all I want, but, like, what is going on? Why are you doing that? Let's move on. He was arrested, and he has this to say about it. I'll move out of the way. Shout out to Full Mount MMA, by the way, for putting all these clips together. Nah, I don't even think that was me. That guy had hair. You seen the picture? I don't got no hair. That ain't me. So he basically made a bald joke about why it wasn't him in the car, even though we know it was. Like, I get making jokes and not really wanting to get into it in your press conference, but come on, man. Have some kind of accountability here. You messed up. It's all fun and get like, it's all, everything's all fun and games until someone's dead and then you're in jail for life. You know what I mean? It's just, that's how it, that's what it comes down to with all of this stuff. Like with Israel Desanya being over the speed limit and uh, over the drinking limit. Oh, he was only a little bit over it. This isn't even a little bit over it, by the way. This is excessively speeding as fast as you can, pretty much. It's all funny and then someone's dead and then you're in jail for life and then they don't get to see their family anymore. So, pack it in. 
What are we doing? Jesus Christ. Um, I also want to get into this Ian Gary situation. So, he was training at Team Renegade. Again, shout out to Full Mount MMA for piecing all this stuff together. Training at Team Renegade, which is Leon Edwards' gym. And Leon Edwards' coach came out and said this, and had this to say about the whole situation, which was, sometimes the coaches allow fighters to come in from the outside, but this is very much a privilege, and it's not the norm. If the coaches feel like it's not adding to the team's culture, a fighter is refused entrance. And that's why they got rid of Ian Gary. I don't think it's really because... Ian Gary's not adding to the culture of the gym. I'm very obvious. It's very obvious what this was. Um, they want a team of people that are there to help each other. And why would you have Ian Gary on the mats? Basically trying to nice guy gaslight you. Because that's Ian Gary's character, by the way. I don't. I really think he's annoying. He's a nice guy gaslighter. He's so nice. And then if you have any boundary with him, he's... What do you mean? I, I'm a super nice guy. Like, I, I was being nice to you. I even got you a coffee yesterday and now this. That's nice guy gaslighting. Whenever you see someone too nice, keep doing shit for you that you never even asked for and being extra nice to you and being extra welcoming to you. Oftentimes they got something on their mind, especially in this modern day and age. No one's that nice. And he puts it on. It's a bit of a gaslighty move. I can just see Ian Gary as that guy getting you a drink or paying for your petrol. And then all of a sudden, when he tries to sort of overstep a boundary and you say, hang on a second, no. Well, I bought you a coffee yesterday, Luke. What do you mean I can't do? I thought we were friends. It's so weird, but that's who Ian Gary is. I don't know how I, don't know how I even come to that conclusion, but if you know, you know. Um, they also had this to say, Ian Gary's more nomadic approach to preparation has given him great results. But it's not in line with what we are creating at Team Renegade. This has nothing to do with one specific fighter or a specific coach. Basically, what they're saying is, fair enough. You can't just walk into the gym and eye up Leon Edwards on the mat, seeing what he's training for, seeing what his tendencies are in the gym, and then just wander off to kill Cliff. First of all, because you're an enemy. Okay, at the end of the day, you're in his division and you didn't come up with Leon Edwards. So you can't just wander into the gym and start, you know, training with him. Like he was training there for a bit, but I'm, I'm assuming as soon as he beat D-Rod and Neil Magny, and now he's a top 10 contender, they were like, oh, hang on a second here. He's actually rising pretty fast. Let's create some distance. Absolutely fine from Leon Edwards. He gave him a bit of training. Now get lost, pretty much. Um, but also you're wandering back to Killcliff. That has Luke K, who you're fighting. So you clearly you don't have a problem with that, which I think is based. I don't like fighters. Oh, we're training partners. We're friends. Don't like that. Um, wandering back to Kilcliffe, which has Luke K, Gilbert Burns, Shavkat Rachmanov, who you're clearly in more of an allegiance with because you've been training at Kilcliffe for longer. Shavkat might be fighting Edwards next. You know what I mean? Like that's the position Shavkat's in where one fight away, two fights away, he is next for Leon Edwards. If Edwards loses and Shavkat wins, they may, they may just make that match up next. He don't want Ian Gary wandering back off to kill Cliff and then wondering, what's he actually telling Shavkat about my half guard game? You know what I mean? Like very obvious stuff. Get lost. And Ian Gary, of course, had a bit of a hissy fit about this that isn't included in this video, saying it's insecurity and stuff like that, which is basically the opposite of, like, and Ian Gary's relationship is a good example of this. Someone who has no boundaries is insecure. Insecure is seen as someone who is, like, no boundaries. He's okay with whatever. No, insecure is seen as someone who has boundaries. But having boundaries is being secure. Now, I mean, it's a weird twist of words that women do quite a bit these days. Oh, you don't, you're not okay with this? You're just insecure. No, being not okay with something is being secure. But they've twisted the meaning of these words. It's a very classic human nature thing to completely flip a meaning of a word on us and then all of a sudden that's the new meaning of the word and nothing makes sense anymore. Being insecure is having no boundaries, no defenses, no protection of anything. Being secure is having them up. But they twist... That flipped in this modern era to now mean if you have boundaries, you're insecure. 
And if you don't have boundaries, you're secure and a great dude. Positive reinforcement for having no boundaries and letting someone walk all over you. Speaking of letting someone walk all over you, which is why I brought up that whole secure, insecure thing after Ian Gary called Leon Edwards' his team that. He got kicked out of his old gym. He said it's because they wouldn't show up to a fight that he was fighting for the title for in Cage Warriors. Fair enough. Um, he apparently, he was, wasn't getting along with people at the gym, was having a bit of trash talk. This is old news. I actually knew about this. He spoke about it when he was fighting for Cage Warriors. He said, I split with my old team and it was a problem. His wife was kind of behind that split and told him to leave that gym, by the way. Just want to mention that too. Now, here's an interview with Ian Gary where he is asked a question by the fan. Um, and here it is. Listen to this. Shout out to Full Mount MMA, whose audio is going to be playing in the background. Their signature audio here. Watch this. Look at her hand go on his shoulder like, I'm in control. Like when Bane puts his hand on that guy's shoulder in the Batman film. Do you feel powerful? You know what I mean? As soon as, as, soon as the question gets asked, that hand creeps into frame and up he looks at her. And the hand creeps in. This is a question that I don't like for Ian Gary. You know what I mean? This is a question. I know Ian Gary's the fighter. By the way, she's his manager as well. I might make... Do I make yes or no in chat? Uh, in the comment section. Shall I make a whole video on the Ian Gary situation? I feel like I haven't done that yet, but there's a lot to it. She's his manager, by the way. His, uh, his nutritionist is her ex-husband, by the way. And I bet if he said no to any of that, he'd be called insecure. Interesting. Hold on, hold on. I've got to play this so you can actually hear what's going on. Here we go. What, what's your thoughts? As you said, like everyone... Were uh what have you to say about that and you know everyone is talking about it it's as you said like everyone is talking you haven't said a word yet well now's your opportunity what, what what's your thoughts on that i'm gonna interrupt for one second just interrupt for one second here that question was a little bit risky and she's kind of behind that as well i know i know they're um dude the head bow after i know i know Yes, mommy. <laughs> it's such a strange dynamic there. That is a weird little dynamic. Like, no, you can't answer that question. And then Ian Gary gives his response. I suppose you've heard some stuff yet, but... Um... You know, we know Chris Fields' a booming voice. We hear it every time, you know, there's a Team KF guy fighting. What will it be like for you to not have that in the corner and not have that voice with you? And he's asked about the team again. What would it be like for you not to have the head coach that was at that team in your corner and not have his advice in the middle of the uh, fight? Would that be weird for you? You know, there's a Team KF guy fighting. What would it be like for you to not have that in the corner and not have that advice with you? And boom, his head pings over. What was that, mummy? <laughs> it's... Dude, it's something again. What can I say? Am I allowed to say this? Wife? In his interview, dude, you're the top UFC fighter here, bro. Answer what you want, okay? And his head's pinging over like, <laughs> this is what happens here, where he's probably not really been with too many, and then an older model comes along, and now all of a sudden, this is what his only expectation for it is. You know what I mean? Happens quite a bit. Where you just, you don't have any experience with any of them. And then one of them comes along and now that's your only experience. So you don't know anything else. 
but this is just normal relationship, right, honey? I'll take your surname. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Uh, your ex-husband is a nutritionist. I mean, this just must be normal relationship stuff, right? It's weird stuff, man. You gotta watch out. There's dangers out there, okay? I'm ready for them dangers myself if I gain a few more subs. Don't worry. Yeah, I know. I know. It's something that I've been... And that's going to wrap it up for the new... Pretty interesting stuff. Then, Paul Felder coming back, making his return. Paul Felder has submitted his first test uh, back in the USA. The testing pool is eligible again to fight in six months. People are saying UFC 300 at G against Jim Miller. UFC 300 in April. Uh, he's submitted his test in November. He's literally just missed that UFC 300 deadline. Maybe not. Maybe this news is a couple of weeks late and he could fight at UFC 300. People are saying Jim Miller. I want to know where Felder's mindset is at on his return though. I'm just going to keep this brief. In my opinion, if Felder's mindset is, I'm going to come back and make a run. I think Jim Miller's too low of a step to come back to. He could lose to Jim Miller and just not be himself and get KO'd. And all of a sudden, uh, Felder's washed. He ain't got it no more. And that's it. No one cares about Paul Felder anymore and who he's going to be fighting. If he just wants to come back and make a paycheck and have that moment again, fight Jim Miller. Absolutely fine with that. I've seen people matching him up with Poirier and people like that. You know what I think? If Felder wants to come back and make a run for the belt, he can do it in two fights. If he beats a top contender and Oliveira is right there, coming off a loss maybe in the future, who knows, to Makashev and he doesn't know what he wants to do. Oh, Felder's there coming off winning the top 10. He beat me before. I can try and get that off my record. You know what I mean? I think that might be Felder's game plan here. And that, if that is his game plan... Don't fight Gamrot. None of these heavy wrestlers when you're coming back after a long time of not wrestling. That's not ideal. You want a striker. Fiziev just blew his ACL apart. And I know that people are going to say, what do you want to happen to Paul Felder? He could lose to anyone. Two fights, he can be in a title shot position. Fiziev, who knows he split decisions a win. Who knows he gets a five-rounder and Fiziev might gas by not being able to finish Felder, which barely anyone can. I don't think he has been finished, other than by Trinaldo with like an elbow to the forehead, which was open to cut on him. So I reckon he could go Fiziev, risk a win there instead of risk a win against a nobody. And then has Oliveira lost recently? Oliveira, come redeem your loss, dude. Maybe get a win over him. Not, I don't think any of this is going to happen, but it depends on his mindset. If he wants to make a run for the belt, he can do it in two fights. By fighting Fiziev, who may not be the same after his injury. He blew his whole leg apart, by the way. May not be the same. Look for a Fiziev five-rounder in the apex. Then, Charles Oliveira coming off a loss. Boom, title fight position. You never know. Um, but yeah, interesting. See you later. Goodbye. Toodle pip.